what's up? Do you feel like an imposter? Do you feel like you're just not good enough? Like you got to be in some place and you just don't belong there at all. And like everybody else around you is just better than you. Well, today in luck, we're going to talk about how to handle imposter syndrome. This is the Existential Stoic Podcast. I'm Danny, everybody. Randy, what's up, Randy? Yo, Danny. I feel like this is a stupid question, but have you ever felt like an imposter? No, never. <laughs> totally confident all the time. I'm always the best. <laughs> yeah, you know, I've been there a lot of times where I uh, felt like, uh, like I was going to get found out. You know, like I, yeah. I was the only person who knew that I wasn't good enough. And, I, and you know, I still experience it even now because I like to try doing new stuff, and it's scary because it's new. And you don't know, and everybody else knows, and you don't know. And it's like, I'm going to get found out for not knowing. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, you know, and it's funny, too, because it's like, also, it's like, I always find, too, especially when you start something new, and then, like, it's after you do it for just a little bit, when you're starting to get good enough where you can do things, so you can actually, like, start applying it, that's when you feel it, too, because you also have a way better sense of what you don't know, or, like, what, you know, what's outside of your realm. And it's just, yeah, it's scary. But we also, you know, I think we don't learn anything unless we take on these challenges, too, so. It is a it's a difficult thing that I think we all struggle with, but everybody's in luck because today we have a few tips for how to handle imposter syndrome, which I think is a very common thing. I'm gonna go first. My first one is remember everybody feels like an imposter. I think literally at some point and probably like that week, everyone's <laughs> like an imposter in some part of their life. I mean, it's a super common feeling. Like they've done they've done studies on this where like. Every, literally everyone feels it's like they don't belong you know whether it's like you're talking about a class where like you don't feel like you're getting the information fast enough work where you, know, you take on a new project and you feel like you're the one that doesn't know anything that's struggling like everybody feels this way and a lot of times it has to do with new circumstances new environments you know it has to do with just like not knowing really where you rank and stuff but like you know it is what it is and like we all feel this way so keeping that in mind you're not alone is important i think because usually when we feel it we feel like Nobody else knows. Nobody else feels this way. They're all confident. I'm the only one that feels like, you know, an idiot that doesn't belong here. Yeah, it's a great it's a great mind shift because, you know, it's I think a lot of us think that we're so messed up and everybody else has it all together, <laughs> yeah. you know, but yeah. really. And especially with imposter syndrome, if you can just look at it and see that everyone's an imposter and just contemplate it at this moment, everyone's feeling like an imposter somewhere. And it's just like, OK, fine. This is my area cool yeah. that's a good way to look at it too right and it's not in this area and others and like because it's sad too that that feeling of being a positive can derail people totally and it's a shame because you know there was no reason for that but they don't they let it get to them you know they don't break free mm -hmm. yeah i mean i've i've been there many times it's not it's not fun <laughs> no it's, <laughs> it's not. not fun at all so i can definitely i can definitely relate uh yeah. so my first one for how to handle imposter syndrome is I found in my life, this generally happens when you're kind of new at something. You know, you're mm -hmm. looking around and everybody's been working there forever. They're all really good at this. They have all know, you know, and it's because you're new. So when you're new, there's a very steep learning curve. Always is. So if you're comparing yourself to people who have been there for a year or a decade or many decades, it's just not fair. But instead compare yourself to how you were yesterday or last week, like short term, and just look at the things that you've learned, the obstacles you've overcome, how you've developed in just this short period of time, and start recognizing how quickly you're adapting and how much better you're getting. Yeah, you know, it's funny, like, I remember, I'll always remember my advisor in undergrad, because he had to have been like, I don't know, he seemed older, but he probably wasn't. But he was, had to have been like in his fifties or sixties at least. You know how you when you're, you know, young, <laughs> really seems older. But uh, he was no, probably like thirty. He yeah, must right, have been 30, like eighty. I don't know. <laughs> Hundred. Yeah. No, but uh, I remember saying because like I was like I remember sitting, I was working on my thesis, and I was like, "How come it's so easy for you?" And he's like, he started laughing. He's like, "I've been doing this as like professionally for like, you know, however many decades." He's like, "That I have on you, that I've been." reading these things he's like of course it's easier for me he's like that's ridiculous <laughs> you know like to even assume that it wouldn't be it's just idiotic you know or to assume that you should be there so i mean it was a great realization that like you know it's okay that i didn't know everything i wasn't expected to know everything nobody would be in my situation and keeping that in mind is like super helpful too that you're new you know you're new in this area and like you will get there but you know you can't have it right now it's not going to be the case 
you know, sometimes you need, that's why we have mentors. That's why, you, have, you know, you reach out to other people with questions. That's why you do these things because it's a way for you to learn and also reach out to people that have been there for a long time and just, it's easier, you know? Yeah. Good one. Mm -hmm. Um, my, uh, it was, yeah, my second one is, um, focus on what you can do, not your limitations. And I think this is actually really important because like we all can, even when you're new, you're going to be, have certain skills in certain areas. You got there for a reason, wherever you are, you know, you're, whether it's a new school or whether it's a job or whatever it is, like you have something that you brought to the table. So focus on what you're actually good at and recognize, you know, what your limitations are so you can build on that, but don't let that derail you because, you know, we all have limitations. And I think that's where like when we really focus on imposter syndrome, we just highlight our limitations, but we forget about what we're actually capable of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like this is really interesting for me and you because we've just kind of transitioned into the tech field. And so yeah. like we have this skill set that's like super high in demand, soft skills, being able to yeah. communicate with people, <laughs> which apparently is just this like mythical beast in technology that nobody can do. But it's it's something where you need to consider what you're actually good at, what yeah. you bring to the table. Because, yeah, granted, our tech skills aren't as developed as some people who have been doing it forever. But guess what? We can talk with people. <laughs> yeah. And it brings a lot to the table, though, because if you can't, you know, I mean, it adds a lot to it. And it means you can also figure out what people actually need and stuff. It makes it a lot easier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is funny, though. Everybody says the same thing. Dude. I know. I've mm -hmm. literally talked to people on the phone on interviews and they're like, wow, you're really good talking to people. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> <We're good talking." laughs> I know, right? Crazy. Uh, so the next one for how to handle imposter syndrome is you know, you need to consider that every person, especially all those people that you idolize, at first, they struggled. They were not born with the gifts that you see them with. And it's so hard because that's when they became famous when they had those gifts. But there was a time before they had them where they had to develop them. And generally, there was probably a long period where they struggled to develop those gifts. But that happens behind the scenes. And then they're an overnight success. And everybody's like, oh, they're born with that. It's you know, I, yeah. I could never do that because I wasn't born that way. And it's like, eh, come on. Yeah. Just takes time, right? You know, it's funny. I remember like, I remember never when I first started teaching too. Like it took me forever to put together like lesson plans and do all, because it was hard. And then like the stress of going in and like standing in front of people and like whatever. But like, and I looked at other faculty there for a long time. I was like, man, I'll never get to that point. I think everybody experiences that work, right? But then, you know, after doing it for a couple of years, like just got easier and easier because you get better at it. You know what you're, you know, you just know how to do things. You know, you know, the routine, you know, the format, you know, and most, you know, most everything has that. So once you figure it out, you're good. It just takes time to get there. Yeah. Good one. My last one for how to handle imposter syndrome is imagine where it'll be in one, five or 10 years. Because this is, I think it is, it's most often, you know, when we're new, it's something that we feel this way. And or when it's a new place or new experience. So imagine if you've done it for that long, like you're going to be good at it. It's going to be easy. I mean, you know, most people like you look at like a workplace is a great example. People have been there for 10, 15 years. Every, it seems easy because they've been doing the same thing for 10 or 15 years. You know, they know exactly how to do it. They probably already have stuff written up or whatever that they just copy. And, you know, it's super simple because most problems are the same. You just revisit them always. And so once you've been doing it for a long time, you know how things work. You knock it out. It's easy. So just imagine yourself in that place and you'll see you'll get there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great one. Imagining your future self. Uh, and then my last one is a, a saying that I was that I heard a while back. That's anything worth being good at is worth being bad at until you can get there. <laughs> and, yeah. and it just helps remind me, like when I get stuck in those situations where I'm like, I'm freaking terrible at this. But I'm like. But I want to do this. So I'm just going to be terrible at this for as long as it takes to get good at it. And eventually, you know, eventually, if you stick with it long enough, you're going to get good at it. Yeah, it's funny, right? Like, you know, you never fail until you stop trying. That's when you really fail. But you're going to fail a lot and you're going to make a lot of mistakes. But like, it is so true. Like, if you just stick with it, you'll be fine. And it's so hard. If you really want it, though, you will stick with it. I mean, that's the truth. Like, I find myself doing that all the time, too. I'm like, oh, my God, I'll never figure this out. It's too impossible. Then, you know. I want it, so I got to keep doing it, and I will get better, and I'll figure it out. And then you remember those problems, like especially too. I think the problems are the ones that you remember how to do and solve most. It sticks with you once you figure it out. It's like you have that knowledge forever. It makes it easier. Yeah. So there you have it. Hopefully that helps. If you feel like an imposter, don't worry. You know, hopefully this helps you handle uh, imposter syndrome. This is the existential Talk podcast. Uh, we'll check us out on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. Uh, like, share, subscribe it helps us out a lot. 
Um, if you could leave a review, that would be great, especially on Apple Podcasts. They're the big one. Um, we'll be back later with another episode, though. Until then, later, Andy. Later, Danny.